Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well out there. Before we get into the video, um, I just wanted to say a few thank yous to various people who have helped with its creation over the last two years. Yep, that's right. I've been working on, on this video on and off for about the last two years now, which is crazy. Between other projects, of course. A big thank you to Nick from the Racing Freak YouTube channel um, for helping me discover some never-before-seen cut items in Conquest Mode. And for bringing new information to light about the fabled Jade Key as well, uh, which we'll get onto later in the video. Also a big thanks to Slippy Slides for creating a walkthrough walls code for this video for Conquest Mode again, uh, which has helped to reveal some brand new information about the game. Also thanks to Stephen Chapman for some initial work on editing the camera in Conquest Mode. Lastly, thanks to Cyborg Elf for some general help and advice, and for the invite to his Discord community. This video has been a real team effort, and to be honest I can say that it definitely has been worth it, as now we can bring you some brand new, never before seen information about Mortal Kombat Deception. So, I hope you enjoy the video. Mortal Kombat Deception was released in 2004 initially for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox as the sixth installment of the Mortal Kombat franchise. It would later be released in the following year for the GameCube and then finally on the PlayStation Portable as Mortal Kombat Unchained. However, it's widely known that the game was rushed to meet its release deadline, much like many other games, perhaps more than you think in fact. One notable example is Gran Turismo 2, one of my all-time favourite games. Despite Mortal Kombat Deception receiving generally positive reviews, it was never finished in the way that the game designers originally intended, which has led to many theories over the years about exactly what was never finished. In this video, I will be mainly looking at Conquest Mode, which is probably the most unfinished mode of gameplay, but we'll also look at other areas too. Ok, let's get started. Conquest Mode is an action role-playing mode of gameplay which was first introduced in Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance. However, in Deception, it has been expanded massively. Playing as a young man named Shijinko, you have to collect six Kamidogu, which translates to Tools of the Gods, and are used to travel between all the realms. Shijinko is on a quest under the instruction of an apparition named Domashi, who claims to be an emissary of the Elder Gods. Shujinko devotes his whole life to this task, only to find out that he was tricked by Damashi, who is actually Onaga, the Dragon King and former ruler of Outworld. So the version of events in Mortal Kombat Deception goes like this. The events of Conquest Mode happen first, then the events of the opening movie happen next, and then the events of Shujinko's ending movie happen last. That is, if you want to theoretically see how Conquest Mode would have ended, if it had a proper ending. That's right, there's no way to actually finish Conquest Mode per se. After you collect all six Kamidogo and place them on the altar in what's called the Nexus, which is like a lobby for all the realms, Onaga takes them from you and disappears. After that, you're left to wander around the realms with no real purpose for as long as you please. However, Conquest Mode is still very useful for unlocking various items in the crypt and earning coins to buy other locked items. One of the ways you can be awarded coins is by completing side missions. These are given to you by NPCs like townspeople and soldiers, but also by other known characters in the Mortal Kombat universe, such as Shinnok and Fujin, for example. Though on occasion, the game will award you with an item for completing a side mission, rather than with coins. Some items are useful, such as the lockpick tools, which open previously locked huts containing coins and coin chests. However, there are various items which seemingly have no purpose in Conquest Mode. Let's take a closer look at them. Most of these items are obtainable from the Earthrealm Village, which is the first level in Conquest Mode. But bear this in mind, once you've left this village, you can never return here. So any items or side quests missed here will be forever uncompleted, unless you start a new Conquest Mode save from scratch. 
However, any chests which you missed, which contain crypt keys, will appear elsewhere in Earthrealm once you leave the village, so you can at least unlock all the unlockables in the game. The first item we'll discuss is the Ninja Star. By talking to a boy with a Goro-like hairstyle, he'll task you with waking up his sleeping brother, as he has chores to do. I am not going to do his chores for him. By locating the sleeping brother, and then speaking to him once more once he's back beside his brother, you'll be granted the Ninja Star as a reward for your efforts. Take this Ninja Star I found as a reward. No purpose has ever been discovered or even revealed by the team at Midway for the Ninja Star. The item's description in your inventory states that it may be useful someday, which suggests that it was meant to be used later on in the storyline. Okay, let's move on to the five keys. There are several keys, and these are not to be confused with crypt keys, of course, that you find in the Earthrealm village and in the Netherrealm. The first key is obtained by first talking to a boy who's practicing ninjutsu. He'll disappear and challenge you to find him, which you can do so by heading straight over to the park. You found me! As a reward, I will give you this key. He'll give you a key as a reward, which will unlock one of the huts near where you originally talked to him, and it contains 400 ruby coins. Next, talk to an old woman walking down the street in coordinates B6. She tells you that she put her money in a safe place. Well, hello there. You look like a nice young man. Please excuse me, but I have to go put my money in a safe place. Although this doesn't look like a side mission, in true Mortal Kombat style, you can punch the old woman to knock her out and she'll drop the key to her hut. Inside, there are loads of coins you can take. A stone's throw away in coordinates B5, there's a man you can talk to who has lost the key to his house. Oh, hello Shujinko. I lost the key to my house when we were playing Mortal Kombat earlier. If you see my key, Please bring it to me. My parents will kill me if someone uses my key to rob our house. Head over to the park again and you will find the third mysterious key. The reward for this side mission varies. You can return the key to the man for a small reward, though the key will then disappear from your inventory. Or you can use the key to rob his house, giving you a larger reward and allowing you to keep hold of the key. Then, in D5, three boys tell you that an older boy by the name of Mecco has stolen their lunch money. Punch the bully, then return to the boys who gave you this side mission, and you will be rewarded with the parent's hut key, a house containing another reward. The last key is obtained from the Nether Realm. Simply approach this dead body and press the action button to inspect it, which is X on the PS2 version here. There is no known use for this key. There is just one building, in fact, in the Netherrealm that is locked in B7, but even when you possess this key, it still remains locked. Although some of these keys have primary functions, like unlocking certain buildings, players have theorised that they were probably intended to have another purpose. Look at the colours of them. Gold, Platinum, Sapphire, Onyx and Ruby. These are five of the six colours of the coins in the game, with the last coin colour being Jade. Was there supposed to be one last jade key to complete the set? And if so, what would they have unlocked? Well, Racing Freak and I decided to explore further and see what we could find out. We exported two files from Mortal Kombat Deception, a list of all the names and descriptions of the items in Conquest Mode, and a list of all the icons associated with these items too. In the icon file, among all the names of the known keys, was the jade key. Just let that sink in. After this item's existence was first rumoured 16 years ago, we can finally prove that it was intended to appear in Conquest Mode. The next challenge was to see if we could actually get it to appear in the item inventory in-game. The first thing we tried was to modify the game's code to force every item to load in the inventory. However, this didn't result in the Jade Key appearing, although we did find duplicates of the Shirai Ryu mask, and the Netherrealm Kamidogu. 
both missing their names and descriptions. After trying a few other things, we struck gold. We modified an existing item to force the game to load in the Jade Keys icon. And so, 16 years since the game's release, we can finally see this item in-game. But, do you remember I mentioned that we accessed the file that holds all the item's names and descriptions? Well, in that file, there's no mention of the Jade Key. So it seems as though all that remains of this item is its image. Its name and description are seemingly nowhere to be found. While we can finally confirm its planned existence in the game, its true purpose still remains a mystery. However, there were four other never-before-found cut items in these files too. We'll revisit these later in the video, so keep watching. Let's move on and discuss Raiden's Staff. Now, as we've seen with other items above, you have to complete side missions to be awarded with them. To get Raiden's Staff, you have to complete no less than four parts of a side mission, which are only available at particular times in Conquest Mode. Meaning that if you miss a part and progress with the storyline, you won't be able to complete all the required parts. On your first visit to Earthrealm, you must speak with a man named Shen. He's standing in front of a building with a moat around it in coordinates E4. He will then ask you to speak with Wen the Elder, who lives right nearby in coordinates D4. He'll note that you are showing promise and that you should return and speak to him again once you feel prepared. Although you can't access the White Lotus Society in full before you've been granted membership, you can go and defeat Jack straight away who is guarding the bridge that ultimately leads to the White Lotus Society. However, if you try to enter the grounds of the society itself at this stage, you'll receive a swift punch to the face for even attempting to get past the guards. Once you've progressed with the storyline and you return to Earthrealm after training with Baraka in Outworld, you will then train with Kenshi and Nightwolf. Once this is done, you can speak with Wen the Elder once more, who tasks you with ridding the Earthrealm of Beast Men, which are actually Takata. He'll then give you the White Lotus Emblem, which you can use to train with Liu Kang after you finish the main storyline of Conquest Mode. The Beast Men are actually Takata, as we said, and they're located near the Earthrealm portal. Simply approach one and defeat Baraka in Mortal Kombat. Doing this apparently scares all the Beast Men away, which brings an end to this portion of the series of side missions leading to obtaining Raiden's Staff. Then, after returning to Earthrealm once more later in the story, you will spar against Kung Lao, where you have to perform a 10-hit combo on him. After that, he tells you to find Kai in Outworld. A fellow member of the White Lotus named Kai is still in Outworld. Please find him and tell him he is needed here to help restore the Shaolin. He gives you Raiden's staff to return to Kung Lao. Staff to Kung Lao. It once belonged to Raiden. It might help him to rebuild the White Lotus. However, upon speaking to Kung Lao, he tells you to keep the staff, which will now remain forever in your inventory. He asks that you use this to strike back against Shao Kahn. Phew, well, did you get all that? That's quite a lot of work there. And what do you get at the end of it? An item with no clear purpose. That's right, there's no way to use Raiden's staff to defeat Shao Kahn. You can find him in Outworld and even get side missions from him. But after that, there's nothing you could do to strike him down as Kung Lao suggests. You can still speak with him, and also try to punch him to generate a different conversation. It is unknown what the game's designers had in mind for this item, other than it having to do with some kind of battle with Shao Kahn. However, Shao Kahn himself wouldn't even become playable until the GameCube port was released a year later. While Racing Freak and I were exploring the game's files, searching for evidence of the Jade Key, we stumbled across a few unexpected cut items. The first of these is the Treasure Note. Its description reads, Treasure is located between the prison and the ruins. Eagle-eyed Mortal Kombat fans may notice that this cut item is in fact very similar to an item that does appear in the game, the note from Baron to Havoc. Its description states, Havoc, 
I left the stolen prize between the ruins and the prison. Signed, Baron. So it seems like this side mission was changed slightly to give the player a bit more context to the treasure note. Although we have no idea who Baron is. This is the only time in the game he's mentioned. However, using a walkthrough walls code, which we'll discuss later in the video, I was able to access a portion of Chaos Realm which usually only becomes available later in the storyline. There's an NPC there who usually says this line. The truce is no more. Begin the assault. However, I used the no clip code to get to him earlier than I should be able to, and he said this line instead. Find your own treasure. I honestly have no idea whether you can do this without the noclip code, in standard gameplay. But also why is this voice different to the voice that he uses for his other quote? And why does this particular voice only show up here for this one quote? Could he be connected to the original treasure note? The second item we discovered was some chicken. Yeah, in the icon list there's one named Chicken. Sadly, like the Jade Key, it doesn't have a name or description in the inventory, but also like the Jade Key, it does have an image. And if we take a look at it in the game, we can see that it's actually a cooked chicken leg. I've got no idea what this item would have been used for. The closest thing I can think of is the section of the storyline in the Earthrealm village where you have to give a guard some ham to allow you to pass across a bridge. Maybe the bribe was going to be some chicken at one point. Who knows? Now we must discuss the two more intriguing cut items found in the game's files. The first of these is an item named the Cyborg CPU. Not to be confused with the existing item, the Cyborg Parts. The Cyborg CPU doesn't appear in the icon list, but does have a leftover name and description. It says, A prototype technology to turn warriors into cyborgs. Very strange, reminds me of the Cybermen out of Doctor Who. Sadly, we don't know any more about this item, only that it would have likely played a role in a side mission. Still, it makes you wonder why it was cut. Was it deemed too scary a prospect for people to be turned into robots? Hard to imagine the creators of Mortal Kombat ever removing anything for being too scary though. Lastly, we have the artifact. Like the Cyborg CPU, sadly it doesn't seem to have an image, but does have a name and description that would have been used in the item inventory. Its description reads, hmm, very mysterious. Well, very mysterious is right, so mysterious in fact that we really can't learn anything about it. Although the artifact's name and description leads me to believe that its purpose wasn't just to be part of a mere side mission. Maybe it could have formed part of something bigger. Maybe a cut super unlockable? Maybe one day we'll figure it out. While we were searching the game's files for things relating to the cut items, we also came across one non-playable character listed to appear in Conquest Mode, but to my knowledge doesn't appear anywhere. Not a generic NPC, but a character who was playable in previous games in the series. Usually, characters like these are involved in side missions, while others make very brief cameo appearances. And that character is Chameleon. As far as I'm aware, she doesn't appear anywhere in Conquest Mode. Could she have been part of a cut side mission? Or was it just a cameo appearance? Who knows? Also, there are lines relating to Darius's original name, which was Cassius, which was something that was likely changed during development. And Monster is referred to as Freak at some points. Various characters in the Netherrealm talk about Kochal. He is said to be a three-headed god and a rumoured super unlockable at the time of the game's release. There is a shrine to this god in the Netherrealm 2, where a mission takes place whereby the player has to defeat three members of the Black Dragon Clan, Cobra, Kira and Cabal. 
However, the player is simply rewarded with a thousand Onyx coins for completing this challenge, leading players to believe that Kochal simply stands for Coin Challenge. Mortal Kombat's designers have been known to blend words together like this before. For example, Error Macro refers to Ermac, and Motion Capture refers to Mocap. There is a temple in the Earthrealm village which various characters talk about. In particular, there's a guy in coordinates A6 who has quite a lot to say about the temple. Let's listen. Hello, how are you? We have a temple here in the village. When you have proven yourself to us, you will be allowed to enter. How do I prove myself? You must speak to the guards at the temple gate. Okay, I will speak with them. Goodbye. So apparently, you can speak with the guards at the temple, who will tell you how to prove yourself to gain entry. Well, there's only one guard, as it turns out, who says that you don't have permission to enter. Although you can simply shove him out of the way and get into the grounds, at least. Inside, there are two monks, though they don't really have anything interesting or relevant to tell you either. In fact, they're just generic NPC phrases. Oh, the Lin Kuei. I hear they are a clan of cutthroat ninjas. Upon examining the temple, there's a door at the front which you can't get to, as you're blocked from being able to climb the steps. Also, there's a hidden door around the side of the temple, with a coin chest in the way, again to stop you from interacting with it. But were you ever supposed to interact with these doors? Let's take a closer look. So, the way the game handles interiors in conquest mode goes something like this. You press the action button, X on the PS2 version again here. The door opens, revealing a black texture, which Sujinko then walks through. The screen goes black, and then the game loads up the interior. Therefore, any door you are supposed to be able to interact with has this black texture behind it. Any door you weren't ever supposed to be able to interact with is missing this texture. Let's take a look at an example. This is the Lin Kuei Temple in Earthrealm. Now, you can't even interact with this door. However, if we use a no-clip code, also called a walkthrough walls code, we can actually see that we can interact with this door. There's no interior though, but at one point in the game's development, were we able to go inside the Lin Kuei Temple? Okay, so maybe that's not the best example. Here's another one. This is the temple in Chaos Realm. You can't interact with this door either. It's not locked, it's just that you can't interact with it at all. Let's take a closer look at the Shaolin Temple. As you can see, the hidden door on the left side of the building has that same black texture as the buildings in the game which the player can enter. I'm using the free look option on the Dolphin emulator to accomplish this. It allows me to look through walls. Also, by turning Shujinko around, the game, or at the very least how the emulator handles the graphics, will only fully load the textures that the camera is facing towards, probably to ensure fast gameplay. By using the free look option to look behind, the texture of the door disappears, giving us an even better look at the black texture, confirming that you were probably once intended to interact with it. But I wanted to explore further, so I got in touch with the YouTuber Slippy Slides and asked him if he could make me a walkthrough walls code for Conquest Mode. And he did! So from one mat to another, thank you. You've helped me explore this game deeper than I ever thought I would. So if we use the code to bypass that damn chest, we can get into the right position to interact with the door. But sadly, you can't. I guess the developers never got as far as programming it. Or maybe it was taken out. Interestingly, I also took a closer look at the temple in Chaos Realm. It has two entrances, one to the front which you can't interact with, and one to the back that you can't even reach. Taking a closer look at the back door, it's missing the black texture, which means that it was probably never meant to be accessible. However, if we turn our attention to the front door, we can see that it has another black texture behind it, meaning that it was once intended to be accessible. Was there originally some kind of connection between the temple in the Earthrealm village and the one in Chaos Realm? We may never know the truth.
Using the code that Slippy Slides kindly made for me, I was also able to explore other inaccessible areas of the Earthrealm village. There are a few huts and houses that you can't normally reach, however when I tried to enter them by going out of bounds, all the doors were locked. This is likely because the exact same hut models as the ones in the playable area were used here, simply for the purpose of creating more of a background to the level. However, there are also other huts within the playable area that remain locked, particularly in the last section of the Earthrealm Village. Again, we may never know why these remain locked. The game designers could have at least put coins or chests in here, instead of not allowing you to enter them at all. As we mentioned before, there is also the building in the Nether Realm that remains locked. This is pretty odd because it's the only building in the entire level that you can't enter. We may never know again what was originally planned here. After exploring further, I also found a coin and a coin chest hidden out of bounds. Why they were placed here I'm not entirely sure. However, one theory about super unlockables within the game was that you had to complete conquest mode 100%, getting all chests and completing all side missions. With this coin chest hidden here, this would have been impossible for regular players trying to accomplish this feat. What makes this challenge harder is that there's no way, within the game at least, to keep track of how many coin chests you've opened, or how many side missions you've completed. You have to rely on online guides, but how can you be sure that the writer has found every chest and every side mission themselves? Also, I swear that this coin here on Chaos Realm can't be reached by standard means. It sits behind the portal here, which is surely out of bounds. I could only get this by using the code that Slippy Slides made for me, but please correct me if I'm wrong on this. However, you can actually reach this coin by performing a glitch where you talk to an NPC over and over again until they push you right through the level boundary. So you can actually go out of bounds without this code if you wanted to explore some of these areas yourselves, although when you're out of bounds you will find quite a lot of invisible walls that stop you from going from one area to the next. One place I thought might have been of interest are the ice caves in Outworld. If you take a look at the location from the playable area, doesn't it look like it ends very abruptly? The rocks at the end of the path aren't even the same colour as the rest of the cave. Sadly, there's nothing that exists past the rocks at the end, but the game's designers may have planned for the caves to go on further at one point in time. Take a look at this map of the ice caves you obtain from a side mission involving Frost. The area shown on the map is way bigger than the playable area on the game. There are also some characters placed out of bounds that you can't usually reach. In the Nether Realm, there's this spot here where Johnny Cage and Goro are engaged in Mortal Kombat. At first, I tried to see if I could talk to them, but sadly, I couldn't. However, you can actually punch them. Also, I find it weird that one of Goro's sets of arms clip into his body, leading some players to think that this particular model only had one set of arms. However, now that we're up close, we can see that he does have both sets. When you first visit the Nether Realm in Conquest Mode, there are certain parts of the level that you're not allowed to explore yet. Take this bit for example. Natara and Cyrax are having a good old conversation here, but when you get access to this part of the level, they're long gone. Like Goro and Johnny Cage, you can't interact with either of them, and you can't even punch them. However, they can punch you, and that's true for both of them as well. So if you venture across here, you just get your ass handed to you. One of my favourite things about the noclip code is that we can use it to skip parts of the story. Starting on Chaos Realm, you can actually collect the Chaos Realm Kamidogu much earlier than you should be able to. If you're not familiar with this game, Conquest Mode takes place over many years. 
There are actually five different Shujinkos you play as, starting from a young lad all the way to an old man. From here we can go to the Order Realm and clip into the prison area, which you visit at a later stage in the game. Well, I say prison, it's, I guess it's more like a holding cell really. We can't talk to any of the other prisoners in here, as once you get to the point in the storyline when you're supposed to be in prison here, these people are gone. However, we can talk to the two guards and doing so actually progresses the storyline even further, as it triggers the cutscene where Dairo breaks you out of prison. By now, you're actually supposed to have gone through two more ageing processes, where Shujinko reaches his final old appearance. But obviously, we've skipped these. From here, you could go to Edenia and continue with the storyline. Interestingly, when cutscenes play out, the lines that Shujinko speaks are still spoken as if he were an old man. So it seems like the lines of dialogue aren't connected to a particular character model, but to a certain cutscene. You are a bit old to be in Shao Kahn's military, are you not? I am Shu Jinko, champion of the Elder Gods. I have come to release you at the request of your daughter, Katana. Anyway, it's just really weird to see a young Shujinko talking with his old man voice. In the fight with Tanya, we still fight as the old Shujinko, as only the youngest and oldest Shujinkos have their character models for the 1v1 fighting mode of gameplay. Also, in the final cutscene with Onaga, the old Shujinko appears again. I guess these are specific cutscene models that are used here. But once the ending cutscene and the credits have played out, and we load conquest mode back up, we are still playing as the younger Shijinko. This means that we have bypassed two more aging processes, and we were able to finish the storyline with the wrong character model. In fact, we can actually do the same thing for the fourth Shijinko as well, the one with the red armour. If we progress the storyline a little further, and then break into the holding cell like we did before, we can trigger the same set of events that we did with the third Shujinko. I have no desire to converse with a criminal. Am I not innocent until a court arrives at a verdict? Once we've played out the storyline, and loaded conquest mode back up again, like we did before, we can keep playing as the younger Shijinko, having completely bypassed the last age transformation. Here's a mystery that I always wondered about when I was younger. Okay, so there's a part of the Conquest Mode storyline where you're supposed to enter the Mortal Kombat tournament after training with Nightwolf and Kenshi. Let's take a listen to the dialogue. But I have dreamed of entering the Mortal Kombat tournament since I was young. You will have to wait your turn, my friend. If he is still alive when I am finished with him, you may take your revenge. We will see, Shujinko. I will meet you on the island. So once Kenshi's finished talking, he runs off towards the beach area within Earthrealm. You can try to follow him, but if you move so far in any direction, you'll trigger a cutscene with Damashi, who tells you to forget about entering the tournament, and to continue with your quest to find all the Kamidogu. After that, Kenshi disappears and your target switches to the Earthrealm portal, to go back to the Nexus and onto the Netherrealm. I always wondered what would happen if you managed to somehow bypass the cutscene trigger and get all the way to where Kenshi is located. Instead of using the no clip code, we're going to modify Shujinko's coordinates, so that when we finish training with Kenshi, we'll be transported to right near where the spot where Kenshi runs off to is. Once this cutscene is finished, and it's a little bit glitchy now because we're located so far away and not where we're supposed to be, we'll be transported to the beach area where Kenshi will soon join us. The cutscene trigger only seems to load once the previous cutscene has finished, so by moving Shujinko before the cutscene with Kenshi ended, we could avoid having the cutscene with Damashi begin to play. Anyway, sadly, you can't interact with Kenshi here, and he even disappears before he gets to his target destination. I always liked the idea that you were supposed to enter the tournament at one point in time, 
but the developers maybe changed their minds and had you continue with the quest instead. Well, maybe not. I also remember thinking that the small island you can just about see from the beach in Earthrealm was Shang Tsung's island. Obviously, now that I'm a lot older, I can see that the island is way too small and it's just part of the scenery. But hey, that's just how young minds work, right? Also, there's one other cool little glitch you can perform in Earthrealm with the no-clip code. So, you know how it only snows when you're near the Linkway Temple? Well, if you no-clip through the wall and then jump back into the playable area at another part of the level, you can actually keep the snow falling. I think it's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the Nexus. As mentioned before, this is kind of like the lobby for travelling between all the different realms. The six Kamidogu required for opening all the realms all fit on the altar in the centre. However, there's one spot in the middle that looks as though it was for something else, most probably Quan Chi's medallion, also known as Shinox medallion. At the end of Conquest Mode, Shujinko suggests that Onaga has gone to Outworld to locate Quan Chi and steal his amulet. In fact, we see Onaga taking the amulet from Quan Chi during the game's opening cinematic. Was Quan Chi's amulet originally supposed to feature in Conquest Mode 2? I mean, they went to the trouble of making a designated spot for it on the altar, so it's a possibility at least. On a side note, Quan Chi's amulet kind of exists in Conquest Mode. It features in a side mission given to you by Shinnok in the Netherrealm. However, the item in your inventory clearly states that it is a fake, and therefore not the true amulet. So, what could we have originally unlocked if the game was finished in the way its creators originally imagined? Well, there are a few clues around. One classic rumour revolves around the mysterious coffin WQ. Around the time of the game's release, it was rumoured to stand for Where is Quan Chi? You can see this coffin by scrolling very fast through a vertical line of coffins in the crypt. Keep an eye on the bottom of your screen here. Did you catch that? Well, if not, here's a screenshot of the WQ coffin. So far, no one has ever managed to access this. Also, in the crypt, you can see various unplayable characters running around through the lines of coffins. There are characters such as Johnny Cage, Goro, and Sector. Were they ever intended to be playable? Well, Johnny Cage does appear as an NPC on Conquest Mode, and you can even fight against him, although Goro wouldn't become playable until the GameCube port was released. In the game's menu screens, you can also see familiar characters' names from past titles in the series, such as Fujin and Striker. Could these have once been unlockable characters? Or is this simply the game designer screwing with us, as the Mortal Kombat staff love to do? If this is an easter egg, it wouldn't surprise me, as there are other easter eggs in the game. Takata warriors in Outworld mention the ninja Karasu, for example. This is a reference to a character in another Midway game, The Grid. Also, check out some of these phrases from Conquest Mode. Halt! What is the password? Uh, Toasty? Incorrect, fool! Halt! What is the password? Would it be... Frosty? Incorrect, fool! Is it... Password? Incorrect, fool! Hmm. Is it Gosky? Incorrect, fool! Uh... Lin Kuei? Incorrect, fool! I have no idea. Leave it once, or your life will be forfeit! As well, Havoc says, this is gonna suck, when you knock him off the edge of the Sky Temple. And Mocap says this when you punch him. Oh, my balls! On the pit stage, you can see something weird flying past the moon. Also, have you ever noticed that some characters on the Nether Realm and Chaos Realm speak in reverse? This means that we can record their lines, then play them backwards to reveal what they're really saying. Surprisingly, it's not what the subtitles would have us believe. Check this out. This video game is dedicated to our homies. 
If you want to hear every single line of dialogue in the game translated from backwards speech to forwards, stick around at the end of the video to watch them all. The Void is a place beyond the realms where the Elder Gods dwell. Anyway, let's get back on track. You can unlock several items in the crypt that relate to Onaga's unfinished arcade mode ending. So it looks like Onaga was intended to be playable all along. Let's take a look at these unfinished endings. We can still play as Onaga using cheat codes, and he's pretty functional. He has five special moves, but only a handful of normal moves. The special moves all work pretty well aside from one, the Dragon Slam, which is done by pressing forward forward triangle. It's fine on stages with no roofs, but on other stages with low roofs, you can glitch right through them with this move. Also, this move can cause your opponent to glitch through the walls. Take a look at this. I guess this is why the Dragon Slam was removed from Onaga's move list when he became playable in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Onaga also has an unobtainable Puzzle Fighter character as well. When playing through Conquest Mode, you'll meet various characters from Deadly Alliance whom you can face in Mortal Kombat. You can also face Noob and Smoke individually, as opposed to the Noob Smoke tag team. However, we can play as them using cheat codes, but their movesets are pretty limited on their own. We can perform some basic combos, and they only have one costume each, which happens to be their alternate costumes for some reason. Smoke also has a pretty interesting glitchy move where he flies up into the air and lands back down. Incidentally, the tag team of Noob Smoke is perceived by gamers as a leftover of a planned tag team mode of gameplay, similar to Tekken Tag Tournament. I guess that's another reminder that, despite MK Deception being a good game, it could have been even better if it was finished in the way they intended. There's also a ghost version of Liu Kang, opposed to the zombie version that's unlockable. Ghost Liu Kang trains you on Earthrealm when you have access to the White Lotus Society, and again he can be made playable with cheat codes. He has the exact same move to the zombie version of Liu Kang, and therefore none of these characters, Noob, Smoke, or Ghost Liu Kang, wouldn't have really made great unlockables. We can also play as the young Shujinko from the beginning of Conquest Mode, who has the same basic moveset as the older, playable Shujinko, except he doesn't have any special moves. However, what's interesting is that he has a two-player costume. Instead of having a red undershirt, it's green. Now, why would the game's designers bother to create this second costume if he was never meant to be playable? And then there's Monster. Monster appears on Conquest Mode as the apparent true champion of the Elder Gods, and challenges Shujinko in Mortal Kombat. However, it's widely believed that Monster was originally intended to be an alternate costume for Scorpion. And in any case, his moveset is pretty glitchy. His spear throw doesn't work properly, and we can perform his winning and losing poses as special moves. His winning pose also creates a soft freeze. Next up is Jax. His moveset is fairly simple, almost the same as on Deadly Alliance. However, he not only has a two-player costume, but also an alternate costume and a two-player version of that costume. Out of all the NPC characters, he's probably the most finished, so it's no surprise that he was made playable in the PSP port Mortal Kombat Unchained. There's also old or good Raiden, however you want to refer to him. This is the version of Raiden who trains you on Order Realm. He has a standard costume and a two-player version in purple. His basic moveset is the same as the playable Raiden, however his special moves are unfinished. He has this glitchy lightning bolt special move that can be used for some outrageous combos. Pretty fun. Now on to Quan Chi. With all the rumours at the time of the game's release, like Coffin WQ, as we discussed before, and also I remember Quan Chi's Realm being discussed as a potential unlockable in Conquest Mode, you'd expect Quan Chi to be pretty close to being playable. However, he's probably one of the least finished non-playable characters on the game. He has one costume, with no second player colour variant, and even that's not finished. His sash at the front there you can see should be green or blue rather than black and it glitches through his legs too. His character model in Conquest Mode actually has the correct coloured sash though, for comparison's sake. Kung Lao is also playable with cheat codes, and he does have a two-player coloured costume, unlike Quan Chi. However, he's missing his signature hat. 
He also shares the same weapon moveset, the broadsword, with Quan Chi, which means they've simply been directly ported from Deadly Alliance. Kung Lao appears on Conquest mode in what was his alternate costume in Deadly Alliance, although he's not playable at all in this costume. Johnny Cage has a two-player costume, and like much of the other NPCs ported from Deadly Alliance, his moveset is somewhat simple compared to the Deception's playable roster, which means you can't do too many fancy combos. Sonya Blade is much the same. She has one costume in two different colours, and has the same moves as in Deadly Alliance. Like most of the NPCs, she lacks special moves. However, I haven't investigated whether any of these characters have fatalities. Maybe that's one for you guys to try. Nitara has one costume in two colours again. However, she uses the dragon teeth as her weapon, rather than the camo weapon she had in Deadly Alliance. This is most likely because no playable character uses the Kama in Mortal Kombat Deception, so it was just easier for her to share Kira's Dragon Teeth rather than importing her old weapon moveset just for one battle on Conquest Mode. Next up is Shang Tsung. Oddly, he only has two movesets, Snake and Mantis. He has no weapon. In Deadly Alliance, he had the Crane moveset rather than Mantis, and his weapon was the Straight Sword. What's also odd is that his only costume in Deception was his alternate costume in Deadly Alliance, although he appears in his original costume in Conquest Mode. Like Jax, Frost would appear in the PSP version of Mortal Kombat Deception. However, unlike Jax, she doesn't have an alternate costume like Jax does here on the original PS2 version of the game. However, she is the only character on the game to have the Yuan Yang moveset. No playable characters share this with her, so it's possible that Frost and Jax were originally intended to be made playable before the PSP port. Kitana also appears on Conquest Mode as an NPC, and is therefore playable with cheat codes. Her weapon moveset, the Steel Fans, aren't used by any playable character, meaning that they were ported specially for Kitana to use. For this reason, you'd put her as a good candidate to have been unlockable. She was eventually made playable on Mortal Kombat Unchained, though. Lastly, we have Dramin, who is probably even less developed than Quan Chi. He has one moveset, one costume, but does have two colours for this outfit. However, his moves are unbelievably basic, and he's even missing his mask. You could even say he looks more like meat. His Conquest Mode character model does have the mask, though. So, we may have come to the end of the potential unlockables and unsolved mysteries, but does this mean that this is as far as we go in getting some answers? Well, maybe not. But even though we couldn't get into the Shaolin Temple in the Earthrealm Village, that was because we couldn't even interact with the door. So, could an interior for the building still exist within the game? One possible solution is to create a code that allows us to modify which interior loads up when we enter a building. So, to elaborate, say we enter this building here, but the code forces the game to load an interior for this building over here. We also have the locked buildings in the Earthrealm Village, and particularly the one in the Netherrealm to explore. Could it be possible to unlock these doors with the use of Cheat Engine? Presumably every door has a value assigned to it, which is where the value can only be open or closed. So for example, one value would state that the door is locked, and another value would state that the door is unlocked. Could we create a code to unlock every door in the game by default? Let's look forward to what the future might bring anyway. In the meantime, please stick around if you want to hear every single piece of backwards dialogue from the Netherrealm and Chaos Realm played forwards. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and see you next time. The body of Liu Kang has been reanimated. It has wrought destruction upon his Shaolin brothers. Onaga seeks information in Udenia. Tanya will provide it for him. Drink milk. Get plenty of sleep. Listen to your parents. Do your homework. The Void is a place beyond the realms where the Elder Gods dwell. This video game is dedicated to our homies. Ed Boon 490, Ed Boon 490, Ed Boon 490. 
Rico is not Shao Kahn, though sometimes he secretly wears the Emperor's helmet. Raiden will return from Annihilation, though he will not be as he once was. There are many realms. Good is any act that promotes the separation of the realms. Evil is any act of consolidation. There's a little bit of me in everyone. Sub-Zero's ancestral armor responds to him on a spiritual level. To defeat the Dragon King, you must take from him that which makes him strong. You are being deceived. Will Su Hao return from the dead? Uh, probably not. Find Liu Kang in Outworld and inform him of Tanya's treachery for a different reward. The realms are in fact the shattered consciousness of a singular being. Did Shang Tsung and Quan Chi survive Raiden's ethereal blast? Time will tell. And now it's time for another exciting episode of What You Get! Play Mortal Kombat with a friend in Vietnam. For many years, the Shao Kahn and Centaurs were rivals, both seeking Shao Kahn's favor. Beware, Damashi is the Dragon King. Perhaps you did not know this, but Noob Saibot spelled something backwards. Scorpion is the true champion of the Elder Gods. If all six Kamidogu are fused into one, they will become a most powerful weapon. The Dragon King's army was undefeatable due to his ability to revive his troops from death. It is said that John Vogel is a genius. Onaga was poisoned and slain by his advisor, Shao Kahn. Onaga took possession of Reptile's body in Outworld before stealing the Kamidogu and claiming Quan Chi's amulet for himself. The Dragon King will rule supreme. Mortal Kombat. Toasty. Frosty. Finish him. Fatality. Flawless victory. It may be that Frost is merely hibernating. The Dragon King revived the slain heroes who confronted the Deadly Alliance. The Mortal Kombat Tournament was created to allow Shao Kahn to earn the right to merge other realms with Outworld. The spirit of Liu Kang will live on! No warrior ever truly dies in mortal combat. The Dragon King watched from beyond death as events unfolded. Long ago, the Elder Gods shattered the One Being with the Six Kami Dogu. I am talking backwards. Spooky, isn't it? The gods do not truly die, they merely dissipate until they can be reformed. It is a little known fact that Ermac is short for Error Macro. You rock the house like Midway. In their purest form, the Elder Gods resemble the dragon symbol of the Mortal Kombat Tournament. All of existence is merely the dreams of the One Being. The forces 
forces of good and evil balance each other through the act of combat. Rain is purple, get it? In the beginning days, sorcerers were commanded by the Elder Gods to construct the many portals that connect the realms. Smoke's nanotech systems are transforming his shape. Parents of the world, there is no satanic content hidden in the backward speech in Mortal Kombat. The Elder Gods do not directly interfere in the affairs of the realms, for fear that they may awaken the One Being. Mortal Kombat! It is crazy with a K! If you have decoded this, you have way too much time on your hands, my friend. Lucifer once ruled the Netherrealm, until Shinnok defeated him. Shao Kahn, Lucifer, and Raiden are of the same race of beings. John Vogel is a genius. Each Kamidogu can only be used by one individual, but Onaga seeks to fuse them all into one so that he may utilize their combined power. <laughs> 